Those of us who have experienced uh, the death of someone we love, uh, we know very well it is incredibly hard to let go. And if you've been there with a person at the moment of death, even though we believe that, that he, or, he or she has gone to, uh, as we say, a better place, perhaps relieved of some terrible suffering, the memory of that experience can linger for years because death is hard. It's a fact of life, and it discriminates against no one. So today, the church places before our eyes the mystery of life and death in this commemoration of the faithful departed. This day is a sober reminder for us that we have here no lasting city, that much of this is fleeting. Thanks be to God for us that death is not an end. St. Paul instructs us that death no longer holds power over Jesus, and we, we who are baptized into Christ's death live with a substantial hope, a hope that doesn't disappoint. As Kelsey said and read from the Book of Wisdom, our hope is full of immortality. Our hope helps us to wrap our brains around the mystery of death, that it's a transition, a sacred passage, a gate, if you will, through which we have to pass. Nonetheless, let's face it, when death comes, even if it's after a period of a lot of suffering, it has tremendous power over us, even as people of faith. It leaves us so empty and, and in a fog. It's so hard, as you know, to face the fact that someone who has always been there for us is gone. One of the most uncomfortable situations in life is to face death to think about it, to talk about it. But today, we are challenged to confront this great mystery as people who have been baptized into the death that Jesus endured and buried with him. This mystery is an integral part of our human condition and of our journey together as members of God's family. In today's marvelous gospel that I was privileged to proclaim, the emotions that surround death they quickly rise to the surface. Lazarus, the good friend of Jesus, has died. His sisters are devastated, and their heartache moves Jesus himself to weep. He needs to see his friend, Lazarus, even in death. So Jesus reaches into this situation. He, he touches it, and he transforms it, death to life. And in that moment, he reveals the glory and the power of God for whom all things are possible. God's holy word to us at Mass today is an invitation to believe fully in the glory and the power of God and to hand ourselves over, to put our doubts and our fears to death. But today's commemoration isn't really about us. It's about those who have gone before us, those people in our lives whom we have had to let go of, our, our grandparents, our parents, our siblings, a spouse, our friends. Time can soften that grief. But our attachment, like that of Mary and Martha in the Gospel, moves us to want to hold on, to want to bring them back. Our prayers today are for these faithful departed, particularly those whose names we have placed here right before the altar, for their forgiveness, for their speedy purification. Our prayers are a direct response to Jesus' words to us in the gospel today. Untie them, he says, untie them and let them go free.